Hey guys, so other than video games and anime, I have a great passion for making things. I like to sculpt, I like to paint, and cosplay. But today we're going to be making antenna toppers. These things. You may have seen these things before. How are we going to make our own? Well, we're going to be taking a yoga block and turning it into something like this. These are ones that I've made before. We have Kirby over here and we have a blue shell. And I made a crappy no-faced one just for fun. So today we're going to be making a Totoro one, a better blue shell, and a Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. And this Gojo is going to be a uh, cute theme. It's going to be more like a Nendoroid, just to keep it simple. We want to work with simple shapes. All right, so getting started. This is an overshot of all the tools that I will be using, from sandpaper to a drill to scissors and some glue. And I'm going to be using acrylic paint for this. First I sketch what I'm going to be making out of this yoga block, just to give me a rough idea of how much of a chunk I'm going to need. I'm using a bread knife to cut through the yoga block, but any serrated knife will work. Now this is gonna get messy, so make sure you have a trash bin to throw away all the excess chunks. I use a 100 grit sandpaper to sculpt the basic shape of the antenna topper. It does a really good job of cutting through the foam and shaping what you need. After you have your basic shape down, you're gonna wanna use a higher grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. I'm using 800 grit sandpaper. After that, you should have everything smoothed out. This is gonna take some time, and there's gonna be a lot of dust, so it's handy to have a portable vacuum. Next, I'm gonna be shaping Totoro's tail using the same process as before. Next, we're going to be shaping Totoro's ears. Here I'm using regular gardening wire to put through his ears for more stability. Once you have the ears, you're going to want to use about an inch or so of that wire to push through the head of Totoro. After that, you should have your ears in place. The best glue that I've found to work on foam is this contact cement. It's flexible, however, make sure you wear a mask and use this glue in a well-ventilated area. Next we're going to be making his little toenails and fingernails out of a thin sheet of foam. After the glue dries, that's when you can start assembling all the pieces together. Be very careful because once you attach the part, that's it. It's permanently glued together. And now you have your basic Totoro. going to 
be making the blue shell. Again, I'm just cutting out a chunk of foam that I need to use. I save all the larger chunks to use in the future for smaller parts like Totoro's tail or ears. Having art projects and making things always makes me feel better, especially when I'm dealing with my depression or anxiety. It's really nice and really helps to have something to focus on and enjoy the process and that satisfaction you get once you're done and you see the thing that you created and you can be proud about it. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like the experience. And I encourage everyone to try to make something. Have a little project to do every week, either that it's a painting or a sculpture or even making antenna toppers. <laughs> For the features, I'm gonna be using another sheet of thin foam. You can get these at Michael's. We're gonna be using this foam for the shell plates and rim around the outer shell. This is gonna give it more depth and look more like a actual turtle shell. Use this glue very sparingly. You do not need a lot. And only put the glue where you're actually going to have contact. After cutting out each plate, you're going to assemble them once the glue dries. Next, we're gonna use a thin strip of foam for the rim of the shell. Use a heat gun to pre-shape it. Oh, by the way, heat guns get hot, so if you reach over it like I did, you, uh, yeah, just be careful. Heating up your foam before gluing it is uh, really helpful to get the shape you want. What I'm doing is I'm rolling this up to make a nice rim for the outer shell. And already you can start seeing the blue shell come to life. Next, we're gonna be cutting out triangle chunks for the spikes of the blue shell. Make sure you only glue where there's gonna be contact. After that, your shell is ready for painting. Two down, one to go. Finally, we're gonna be making our Gojo using the same process as before.
For the ears, I'm going to be using a slightly thicker sheet of foam. For the hair and blindfold, we'll be using the thin sheet of foam. I'm using scissors to cut out the spiky hairstyle. It was very challenging not to make this look like a pineapple. And now we move on to the next step of prepping our toppers for paint. To prep the foam for paint, we're gonna be using a heat gun. And what this does is it smooths out the surface even more and prevents the foam from just absorbing the paint. As a base coat, I'm gonna be painting everything white. The foam still absorbs some of the paint, so I'm doing three coats of white each, using a heat gun in between coats. Next, I'll be sketching out where I'm actually gonna be painting and how the topper's gonna look. For Totoro, I'm gonna be using slate gray acrylic paint, and essentially every color I use, I'm putting three coats each. For the small details, I use a toothpick to paint. For Totoro's stomach, we're going to be using white with a drop of yellow, just a tiny bit. our Totoro ready. Moving on to the blue shell, first we're going to use a toothpick to fill in all the gaps between the plates black. For the blue part of the shell, we're going to be using bright blue, three coats for this as well. Don't stress too much about messing up, because remember, you can always go back and repaint and do touch-ups. For Gojo's blindfold, I actually discovered that one coat looks really good. For 
for his hair, we're going to be using a mix of white with a tiny bit of purple. For his skin, we're going to be using a light flesh color mixed with white. Not great, but uh, not bad either. Next we're going to be using a drill to make the hole for your car's antenna. My car's antenna is actually at an angle, so that's why I'm drilling into the shell at a slant. Make sure you use a drill bit that's a lot thinner than your car's antenna. You want this to have the ability to rip. The Totoro antenna topper is actually going to go to my wife's car. Hers is a little thicker, so I'm using a bigger drill bit. And finally, we're just going to spray three coats of Mod Podge matte finish as a protective cover. And you're finished.